Hello, Campbells, and welcome to our first show of the semester. I'm Abby DeBoer. And I'm Joshua Davis, and this is Campbell Now. Demand for the new COVID-19 vaccine is rising exponentially. Harnett County health officials have decided to postpone any scheduling of the first doses for the COVID-19 vaccine effective immediately. If you have already had a confirmed appointment, you'll still be able to receive the vaccine. If you've not yet been contacted or scheduled, you'll be put on the waiting list until more supply is brought in. North Carolina will receive an extra 80,000 doses of the COVID-19 vaccine on top of the 120,000 doses already given every three weeks. North Carolina is now ranked 17th in terms of vaccinations given per 100,000 residents. This coming weekend is supposed to be a hit for vaccinations as they are being given at a drive through clinic at the Bank of America Stadium in Charlotte. The expectation is to give over 19,000 vaccinations. UNC Health has the capacity to vaccinate almost 30,000 people per week but will only receive 8,000 doses. This past Saturday, more than 100 protesters stood outside Governor Cooper's home pleading for public schools to be reopened. Parents and educators were motivated by a recent CDC report suggesting that a return to school was possible as long as students and staff strictly follow precautionary measures. GOP lawmakers are currently negotiating a proposed bill that would require schools to reopen during the pandemic. This past Thursday, Wake County School Board voted 7-2 to two to keep students home for remote learning until fe mid-February. The decision came after its board members heard the pleas of school administrators' concerns regarding the rise in COVID cases. Students' grades and staffing continue to be a cause for concern as the school board seeks to hire more substitute teachers. The next school board session discussing a possible return will be held February 9th. The earliest date students can return is February 16th. What started off as just a Reddit post turned into millions of dollars lost by numerous companies. GameStop shares finished at 400000 or higher last week, causing several companies to lose money. Melvin Capital Management lost 53% of its earnings in betting against GameStop. Robinhood and other brokerage companies restricted trading in the stock because of how much money was being lost, but quickly opened it back up. Early Monday morning, the country of Myanmar, formerly known as Burma, experienced a military coup. The military arrested several democratically elected leaders, including the newly elected president. The military has blocked off areas in multiple cities and have shut down local TV, internet, and phone services. In addition, banks have been forced to close for the time being. However, there have been no major reports of violence. Voting rights activist Stacey Abrams has been nominated for this year's Nobel Peace Prize. The Democratic politician gained a large amount of attention this election season. Abrams has been credited with helping President Joe Biden secure the election by registering tens of thousands of Georgia voters. He's also known for mobilizing voters for the Georgia runoff election earlier this month that secured a Democratic majority in the Senate. We'll now take a short break and return with sports. Welcome back, Camels. I'm Drew Ellis. And I'm Madison Thompson. The hype for the Super Bowl is growing with Super Bowl 55 set to be played this sad Sunday, February 7th with a 6.30 p.m. Eastern kickoff time. The Kansas City Chiefs will take on the Tampa Bay Buccaneers in their home stadium. NFL legend Tom Brady will be competing in his history-making 10th Super Bowl, while former MVP Patrick Mahomes will be fighting for his second back-to-back -back Lombardi trophy. In Week 12, the Bucks and Chiefs met with Kansas City taking an early 17-0 lead thanks to Tyreek Hill's explosion past Tampa's secondary. The Bucks went up by three in the fourth quarter thanks to Brady, but ultimately the Chiefs won 27-24. Due to COVID-19 health restrictions, attendance will be at an all-time low with only 22,000 fans allowed in the stadium. This past Sunday, Cam Campbell's men's basketball team defeated Charles Southern 75-67 at home. Cedric Henderson led the Camels with 18 points while Jordan Whitfield added 16. The men's return to action this Thursday at UNC Asheville at 7 p.m. The women's basketball game against Garner Webb this past Sunday has been postponed due to COVID-19 restrictions. Keep an eye out this week as many of our Campbell sports teams begin their seasons. The college basketball race has been as exciting as ever with several top 20 teams losing this past week. 13th ranked Virginia and 14th ranked Florida State both suffered stunning upsets at the hands of Virginia Tech and Georgia Tech. There were some big shifts in the power rankings with Oklahoma's dominance in the month of January. Oklahoma was able to beat four ranked teams this past month with their latest upset victory over Alabama. 
The win over the former ranked 7th Alabama would propel Oklahoma from being unranked to the 12th spot. Tom Brady will be cementing his title as the greatest with his 10th Super Bowl appearance. No other player in league history has appeared in over six Super Bowls. However, this is Brady's first time playing three playoff games to make it to the finals. Brady also has st stands to reap some financial rewards if he were to win. He earned $500,000 for making it to the playoffs while gaining $250,000 for defeating the Washington football team. He has also another million beating New Orleans Saints and Green Bay Packers. He currently has a half million dollars on the line if he beats the Chiefs this Sunday. Darnell Rodgers is believed to be the shortest scholarship player in Division I men's basketball history. Standing at just 5 foot 2 inches, Rodgers has been leading the way for the UMBC Retrievers. Rodgers has helped his team to a record of 10-3 and three with a decent chance at making the NCAA tournament. Due to his strong play and size, Rodgers has garnered some interesting responses from opposing schools fans. Opposing fans have booed when Rodgers has been subbed out and cheered when he is put back in. Well, that's all the time we have today. Thank you for joining us today on Campbell Now. Check us out on social media and Campbell CU TV. Be sure to leave us a like and share us and leave a comment on what you think about today's topics. We hope to see you again next week. Until then, I'm Drew Ellis. And I'm Madison Thompson. This is Campbell Now.